WordPress, blogging, SEO, affiliate marketing, this whole thing is a huge market and there are an endless number of tools you can use to start a website. It's like shiny object syndrome on steroids. And when there's money to be made, gurus and companies try to sell you the best tools. Here's the secret or perfect tool to do this or that. Well, the truth is an individual tool by itself is not going to make you successful. Being a real business owner and entrepreneur, the business strategies are. But the right tools from the beginning can ultimately save you the most time and you can avoid all of the mistakes that I made starting my blog. So that's why in this video, I'm gonna cover my exact WordPress toolkit that you need to create a profitable blog in the 2020s that is easy to use, low cost, and can make you the most money in the long run. But before we get started, I wanna invite you to watch my free blogging masterclass. It covers my exact content link building and affiliate marketing strategies. Make sure to click the link in the description below and sign up to watch the masterclass. It goes over how I make well north of $200,000 a month with my blog. So click that link and let's get into the topic for today. So when we're starting a new blog or a new website, there's a ton of different options we can use. We can use things like WordPress or Webflow or Squarespace or Wix or all of these different website builders tools. We can hire our developer friend. We can pay for everything. We can hire an agency. We can start a website builder. There's tons of options. But why WordPress? Well, WordPress runs, you know, most of the Internet. It has the biggest market share and it is the best platform by far for bloggers. We kind of want to just bury this debate. And it's really about the WordPress ecosystem. So there's tons of plugins and things and uh, extensibility and features and SEO features that really are you know way better than anything else. I first started my blog in 2019 on Squarespace, because I was like, I'm just going to throw up a website. But I quickly understood the limitations of website builders when it comes to SEO and all these different features and ranking and all of that. So if you want to rank content uh, and you want good SEO, basically you need WordPress. It's that simple. It's because of the ecosystem. And basically WordPress is over everything, you know, so we're blogging like a business. We want to just make the most efficient business decisions to make the most money. And WordPress is the clear winner. So we need to just kind of stop worrying. Can I start with Wix? Should I do Squarespace? All of those things. And most people are using WordPress. So designers, developers, you know, people you might need help with in the future, they're all used to WordPress. So it's the most common thing. So the ecosystem itself, the open source plugins that you can just get for free, it's the most affordable way to create the best possible website ultimately. And it's been on the internet for decades. It's, it's basically the thing. So we need to just bury the debate. We're going to go with WordPress. When we're starting our blog. So I want to give you the exact software stack, you know, the affordable and cheap way to create the most, you know, efficient website or blog possible. And this took a lot of research, you know, back when I first started my blog, I was kind of recommending certain things. But over the course of the last three years, and working with my business car partner and creating one of the biggest blogging courses in existence, we really did our deep research. So we created this ultimately created this WordPress tech stack for you, that is the most efficient and affordable. So I'm just going to go over each individual company and product so that we can start with them and you can see exactly what you need to get started. So first we're going to start with web hosting uh, with the best one in my opinion right now is WPX. So WPX is your web host where you're going to first sign up, get your domain name, and this is your web host that stores your files, does all of those things back end and hooks up WordPress and all of that. They are ultimately the best one. They have the best support they're more, the most efficient, great site speed, and all of that. So a lot of people recommend like Bluehost or HostGator or some of these GoDaddy, should I do this or that? Just do WPX, it's the best one. You can sign up for the business plan for $24.99 a month. It's also cheaper if you do yearly, but if you wanna just pay monthly, it's $24.99 a month. That's up to five websites. Just do your one website and it has all the features that you need. Uh, all of our blogging students are recommended this and they've tried Bluehost, they've tried WPX and typically they wanna to move to WPX and we've heard only nothing but great things. So that's your first you know, web hosting decision. Next, let's move on to your WordPress theme. So I get this question all the time. What theme do you use? What theme do I need? Ultimately, I've changed my theme multiple times. That's why we discuss blogs are living, breathing things. Unlike YouTube videos where I can't go in and edit this after I publish it, blogs can always be edited. The homepage can be edited. All the blog posts can be edited. Every Every page can be edited. So ultimately, it's important to just get a theme and start going. You know, the theme I have now is not the one I started with. But if you want the most efficient one, what we recommend is Cadence. So Cadence theme is probably, you know, the best WordPress theme in my opinion right now. It has really great performance, really easy to edit, really easy to optimize, comes with all the features you need. And it also hooks up with the Cadence um, blocks, which is a really easy to use block editor. So when we're creating blog posts and stuff, we want like text, we want images, but maybe creating some unique content blocks for creating an affiliate site that might be important to have some pricing blocks or different features or, you know, comparison charts and tables and things like that. And Cadence itself 
is really great for that. And ultimately it's free. Like you can go with Cadence Pro if you want, but Cadence itself, you can just get started for free. So there's a lot of premium features, you know, if you wanted to like header add-ons, all these different, you know, different implementations, WooCommerce, if you're doing an e-commerce store, but it's basically an annual $59 payment if you want some extra features. So I recommend take a look, but you can ultimately get started with Cadence for free. Another one that I recommend, so that's basically, you know, your web hosting and theme taken care of. So now we want to talk about, you know, after you do that, you get your website set up, you're using Cadence as your theme, then you're into your WordPress dashboard. Then we have to discuss like, okay, what plugins do I need to use to make my site, you know, efficient and run good blog posts and all of that. So I'm going to go through the list now of the individual plugins and other things that you definitely need. And then at the end, I'll cover like the extra ones, the extra plugins that I actually use um, and aren't really like 100% necessary, but are good to have. So one I like is Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg. So Gutenberg is the, you know, de facto standard WordPress page and post editor. It's called the Gutenberg editor, basically. When you add, if you're doing Cadence, you can do Cadence blocks. If you don't have Cadence, but you want these cool like blocks and add, easily add things into your blog post, get the Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg. This is free. It's totally free as well. But you can, you know, create all these different kinds of blocks, like info blocks, advanced headings, tabs, calls to action. If you look at like a post on my site, you can see this is a, this is a Gutenberg block right here, the, across the top, these five picks. Uh, this is a Gutenberg block, ultimate add-on block, this Buzzsprout thing with the Adam's Take section. So ultimately you have a lot of different flexibility with that and it's completely free. It's a good advanced add-on to add into your blog post to create better looking content. Speaking of content, you have to have photos and you have to have images, you have to have text, but what about the photos? How do we optimize those photos? Well. We can use a tool like Short Pixel. So Short Pixel is an image optimization tool that once you upload images into WordPress, it compresses the files down. So we don't want to upload images into our blog posts that are like two megabyte images and it takes a long time for them to load and site speed is impacted. So what we can do is we optimize our blog by basically using a tool like Short Pixel to optimize the images for us. So when you upload an image via Short Pixel, you basically get it it compresses it down, creates a new file, and then it's much smaller. So you want to get like, you want to get all of your images in your blog about the width of your blog itself. So if it's like 750 pixels wide, don't really make any images when you upload them or add them via Google Docs. A lot wider than that. We don't need some huge image condensed down. We want to have something like 750, 800 pixels wide. You want that JPEG to be like 50 uh, 50 kilobytes or something like that. And Short Pixel is really good for that. Speaking of which, I want to like kind of jump ahead to how do we get all our blog posts into WordPress in the first place. Are we going to write them in the WordPress post editor itself, or are we going to write our blog posts in Google Docs? Well, I recommend Google Docs, and I teach this in my course, and it's because guest posts are written in Google Docs, you can outsource writing to Google Docs, and then you convert Google Docs into WordPress with a converter, and you add images into that Google Doc, and this is, these all work together. So you can use a tool here in the WordPress plugin repository called Mammoth Doc X Converter. It's the one I use, it's really simple. Basically, it takes a Google Doc, you save the Google Doc, and then you upload it into WordPress, and it pulls in all the images, all the text, all the headings, and everything. So I struggled with this for a while because I was trying to copy stuff from Google Docs and paste it into WordPress or edit everything in the page or post editor itself. Now, there's pros and cons to this. Like You can like write in the WordPress post editor if you really want to. However, you have to add each image individually, do all these different things. Sometimes it's just easier to create the entire post in Google Docs. What you can do then is all of your images are in Google Docs, optimized with a file name on your computer. You know, you name it something, like if it's a pair of shoes, it's like nikeshoes.jpg. And then when you upload that into WordPress, it automatically is added into the media library. All the images are added, Short Pixel automatically compresses them and all of it's set up. So that's another way that you can use like Mammoth DocX Converter and Short Pixel to optimize what you're doing. So let's move on to some other features. So. WordFence is one that I really recommend as a plugin, another free tool. This is for WordPress security. Basically, it's your it's a really good security solution for WordPress. So it does all kinds of different things. You can add two-factor authentication. You can, um, you know, it does malware, spam removal, all these different things. It kind of is the de facto WordPress security plugin. It does a lot more. So check it out if you're interested. It's totally free and you can, uh, let's see, actually there is pricing. So yeah, it's free, there's a free version. Um, and then again, very affordable at basically, if you want the premium version, you can do $99 a year, but that is WordFence for security. Let's talk about speed. So site speed is another thing that we're talking about. And let's talk about WP Rocket. So WP Rocket is the best, in my opinion, WordPress speed and performance plugin. So, you know, sometimes you 
purchase themes and you get a lot of bloated plugins. So we don't want that. Like sometimes themes come loaded with Jetpack or something that these plugins that say they do everything. But we want to remove that because it just bloats and slows down the site. WP Rocket is a plugin and a company that's always kind of updating what they're doing with new features. So it has everything from like, let's just take a look at some of the features. So it can do everything from like minifying and canonizing, however you, that you say that word, <laughs> minimizing your JavaScript, CSS, HTML. It can like preload images. It can do a caching so it can save your and store your files out there. Preloading, browser caching, all of these different things. Um, and it keeps coming up with new features. So I realize like sometimes I'm like, okay, there's this I issue I had with um, Google PageSpeed and core, you know, some of their updates, like the PageSpeed Insights is saying that something is loading in, in the incorrect order and then, or images aren't loading right. And then WP Rocket had some fix for it. So it's ultimately always coming up and it's kind of staying ahead of the curve when it comes to like speed issues. So you can really, there's a lot of articles as well you can read. I'm not going to dive into it in this video about exactly how to optimize WP Rocket. Just Google like optimizing WP Rocket for your blog and you can see in-depth content about, you know, exactly all the settings you need. But this one is definitely worth it. This one is the first one that actually has pricing. So $49 a year, but definitely worth it. So we can see all of the features there. Next, let's go to another SEO tool that I recommend. So you also need either Rank Math or Yoast SEO. And this is like your... SEO tool for your blog. Now there's there's like three different types of SEO tools and they do three different functions. So there's this Yoast or Rank Math is the one that hooks up to your WordPress site. You can do meta descriptions. You can optimize a little bit of on page. You can do your sitemap indexing. It's really like, I kind of consider these like Google search console helpers in a way. It helps you get indexed correctly is like the main function of these. You can write meta descriptions and things like that. When we talk about really optimizing on page SEO and, you know, keyword tracking and link building and all that stuff. We don't, these don't really count, but rank math is good for that. So you can hook it up with search console. You can add schema or structured data. So maybe you want to add some FAQ blocks into your content. Well, you can just pull that up and add that into your content or image SEO. So you can, you can really look at all of these different features that rank math has. It really covers things like your robot.txt file, your titles, your meta descriptions, your sitemap, getting things indexed in Google, but ultimately check out rank math for your, you know, SEO for your site. After that, let's talk about making some money with affiliate marketing. So next I want to cover what I use personally for my affiliate links, which is Thirsty Affiliates. So Thirsty Affiliates is another really good plugin. And what they do is it cloaks your affiliate links. So when you get your affiliate links eventually as a blogger, it's going to have a really unique identifier. So it's going to be something like WPX.com or .net slash, and then some long string of numbers and letters to identify you. And that's not the best, you know, people don't really want to see that on your site. So how do you organize these affiliate links? How do you manage them? How do you make them look nicer? You use Thirsty Affiliates. Basically what you do is you, Thirsty Affiliates cloaks all of your links. It makes them shorter. It makes them look good. Uh, people can't really just copy and paste your affiliate links. They redirect to the new one. So, and then you can categorize them. So every post you can, you know, categorize these affiliate links. You can see reports based on them and you can really optimize them site-wide. That's the biggest part is like, if you, you add a link for like, let's say Bluehost and you add that link in as a thirsty affiliate link, and then you add it 20 times on the site, well, then you can just go into your WordPress dashboard in the actual thirsty affiliate panel. If you need to change that link, you change it once and it changes site-wide. So then you don't have to change each individual affiliate link. You just have, the, it's kind of the central repository for it. So definitely one I recommend. It was free. Um, it was free about a year ago, but I think now it's $49. So basically another cheap option, $49. That's all it is. So that is the basic, you know, efficient WordPress tech stack. And the total cost of that is basically the only things that cost money are thirsty affiliates at $49 WP rocket at $49. Uh, short pixel is based on the image amount. So you can get like 10,000 images optimized for 10 bucks. So it's really cheap. You can do like $4 a month or $9.99 for 10,000 images. And then your web hosting. So with all of that said, that, you know, efficient, lean, mean WordPress site, the best tech stack you start with is a $132 about plus $25 a month, or you can pay annually on WPX. So really affordable way to like build a really nice looking website in the best possible way. Yes, you could go cheaper if you wanted to. You could get 199 hosting. You could not pay for thirsty affiliates at first or WP Rocket, but that's just ultimately this is, these are, would be my choices if you're starting out. So let's get into some other um, optional add-ons and things that I like 
other you know tools and plugins that I've used specifically. So I like uh, this one here. It's called the Easy Table of Contents plugin. So this one is pretty cool because you know we want people to really be able to engage with our content on our blog. We want them to be able to access things easily. So you can see like everyone asks me, how do I do this on the sidebar in this podcast hosting article? How do I have this? You know, these posts here on the sidebar, sticky. This is actually the easy table of contents plugin with another fixed widget plugin. So a plugin is called fixed widget and you can add basically make these your sticky sidebar widgets. So you'll see like this one doesn't stick this affiliate disclosure, but the table of contents does. So you can make a widget is basically your in any number of different spots on your website. So one is a sidebar. So you can make these fixed or not fixed. So with you using easy table of context and contents and fixed widget, you can add it to the sidebar, but that's not really it. Like you won't necessarily be able to do it this way. This was actually custom coded. So you're gonna have to kind of figure that part out yourself, but easy table of contents is great because again, we want people to click on a table of contents. The more they click on your content and engage and go up and down and read your stuff, the more engagement Google sees, the better your possible rankings are. So that's a really good one. It's easy table of contents. Another one I like is link whisper. So link whisper is a tool you can use to that really tracks and analyzes all of your internal links and helps you make smarter internal link decisions. So I've used it. It's not like, you know, ultimately I don't think it's required, but it is kind of cool and helpful. It shows you like, here's some areas you could add internal links. Here's pages that don't have internal links. So it tells you like, maybe you posted a new blog post and it's like, it has no links to it. It's an abandoned page. It'll tell you that. So it's really helpful from an internal link perspective. So that one's pretty cool as well, Link Whisper. Uh, and then, you know, you got your basic ones like Akismet Anti-Spam. So that one is just really just blocks a lot of spam. I still get spam comments on my blog, like probably nine to nine out of 10 are just spam people spamming the comment section. I don't even really answer comments anymore or approve comments, it just is what it is. But that's another good one. So that sums up your initial website when you're first starting out. So a number of different tools, you have your hosting, you have your theme, you have your plugins and all of that and your tools. Then you're starting your online business, your website, your blog, whatever you're creating. Then the first, like, then what do you actually do? So the first time that you actually would want to spend any money on tools would be for SEO. So I just wanted to cover that in this video a little bit too, because we might as well when we're talking about it. So let's say your site's all set up, you know, in my course, we cover the click by click exact setup to get all of these plugins in to, you know, install the theme, add the plugins to get your settings, to get your first four core pages done and completed to edit and optimize your homepage with cadence and, you know, cadence blocks or Gutenberg. So we cover all of that in depth if you're interested, but I always get asked, how much does it cost to run a blogging business? Well, you know, we're, we talked about the initial cost of about $132. If you get those, all the optional stuff, you can do it for cheaper Then about 20 to $25 a month for good hosting. Then, you know, you can run that for a while by yourself, but I ultimately recommend you know, when you're starting your content strategy that you need to know what keywords you're going after your first 20 articles on your blog. And that really comes with really good keyword research. So again, we always recommend Ahrefs for keyword research. And Ahrefs is the de facto best keyword research tool out there to help you find keyword ideas, um, come up with things and add them into your content calendar. So again, in my course, we cover like exactly how to do it, what posts to look for based on difficulty and volume and what types of posts to write informational, transactional link bait, really long lists. Uh, personal stories, all of those things. But to get the keywords, you have to kind of figure this out. And this is like the, you know, Ahrefs is the de facto best SEO tool. There's nothing in comparison and it kind of is the market leader. They used to have a free trial and they don't anymore because they don't really need to because everyone uses it. But what I would recommend, if pricing is an issue, is not an issue, then just get the standard plan of Ahrefs and that does all of your keyword research, all your link tracking, all your keyword tracking and everything and don't worry about it. It's definitely worth it. If pricing is an issue, then you can get, you know, the standard plan for one month, do all of your keyword research for like the year or six months, get all of your ducks in a row and put everything into your content calendar and then just cancel it. So that's one thing you can do, but that's really, you know, ultimately we have to think about this as a business owner. Like if we're running this as a business and we want to make money, $200 a month is a minimal investment. We're not buying buildings here or equipment or employees or tax things and, you know, licenses. So to start a business like this is kind of the first investment that you would make, but you don't have to make it every month and you don't have to make it right away necessarily. And then that's good for keyword research specifically. Now we want to talk about like the next tool you would use is surfer SEO. And this is for on page SEO. So this is okay, I have all my keywords. Now what am I actually going to write? 
What am I going to, you know, how do I optimize the post from an on-page basis when I'm actually writing it? Rank Math doesn't do that. They have some minimal features when it comes to that. Ahrefs doesn't do that. But on-page SEO when you're actually writing is Surfer SEO. And that gives you, you know, everything you need from an AI standpoint. It it tells you what, how many keywords you need to write, um, how many keywords to add into posts, semantic keywords, headings. I have other videos exactly how I use it and videos on on-page SEO specifically going over the exact strategies. So I'm not gonna cover it here, but Surfer SEO is another one. And the pricing of that one, this is the one that I would recommend when you're writing blog posts to actually, you know, continue with the monthly plan. If I can find the pricing. So it's, you can start with basic, just do like $49 a month. So you can get started with Ahrefs, maybe do one month, do all your keyword research or share a plan with somebody. And then, you know, Surfer is probably the first one I'd recommend you actually pay for on a monthly basis. So then we're talking about maybe $49 plus your web hosting to run an effective blog. And remember, you know, all of these things are investments in your business. They're not just, oh, it's a, it's a cost and it sucks and I don't want to do it. It's really about the profit that you can build with this online business. So my blog, I started the wrong way. I started it with Squarespace, then I moved to Bluehost. Then I, I didn't have Surfer or any of these tools. I had Ahrefs. Um, I used MailChimp for a while. Then I switched to ConvertKit email marketing. So if you get into email marketing, you can use a tool like that. But I made a lot of mistakes and I changed my theme completely. And then I changed it again. And you know, none of this is perfect. So really wow. success comes not from the tools that you use, but from the strategies that you implement. So just get started. Just add these things into the toolkit and then start writing. Start your content assembly and link building as quickly as you can to actually build your authority and make money with your blog. And if you can invest 20 to $50 a month to run a business, then you shouldn't be in business. You really shouldn't. Because when we think about the cost of running a brick and mortar and like launching an actual, you know, physical business, you know, well, if I wanted to start a Starbucks franchise, it would probably cost me a million dollars plus, or, you know, at least 500 grand to start that. And to start an actual online business with a blog is not that expensive, right? Maybe a $132 to start, $20 to $70 a month to run this thing. So we have to start thinking as business owners because the profit margin on my blog today is like 70% or higher on last year's revenue of, you know, say 1.5 million, took home 1.1. It would require me to own like 28 uh, Subway stores or 10 Starbucks, like I said in other videos, to run this business, which would have, you know, needed millions of dollars of investment to start. And we're starting for less than a hundred bucks, you know, monthly. So really we have to start framing this as a business owner but you know you need to put some skin in the game like you need if you want to you know find success that's why a lot of people quit because it's like well it's only three dollars a month i'm just going to quit but if it's a hundred dollars a month or two hundred dollars a month or thousand dollars a month or you start hiring and investing then it's like oh crap i need to actually get moving on this to find success so that's just kind of how to frame it but this hopefully was helpful in showing you exactly what you need to get started with the wordpress site if you're interested in more if you're interested in the exact content link building and affiliate marketing strategies how you not just start the blog but how you actually do the difficult stuff the content assembly the link building the building partnerships and then the monetization how i make over two hundred thousand dollars a month make sure to click the link below and watch my free blogging masterclass. class thousands of students have gone through it so make sure to sign up in that link below you'll get it totally for free and you know let me know i hope this video was helpful what kind of tools are you using in WordPress? Um, are there any that you found helpful? I'd love to hear what you're using. Please like the video and I will see you in the next one.